Welcome to Dune Chapter by Chapter. I'm Dominic. Now, in the last chapter of uh, Dune, last video, we saw uh, things starting to boil over with Lady Jessica as Duncan Idaho kind of got had a little bit too much uh, spice beer, got drunk, and then uh, let the cat out of the bag. Uh, you know, said to Jessica, ordered him to drink some co uh, coffee to sober, him, uh, sober himself up. And he basically said, you know, I don't take uh, orders from Harkonnen spies. So then everything made sense to her, how people were behaving oddly around her. And then her and Hawat kind of had a, a showdown. And she wants him to root out the actual real traitor. Because she knows it's not herself. But Hawat still didn't really trust her. But then Hawat was shown just how powerful the Bene Gesserit is. So now the next chapter, this is where things kick off in the story. Uh, this is like one of the key scenes that, uh, you know, if you're ever to make a Dune movie, a Dune uh, comic book adaptation or a Dune TV show, this chapter is always, always has to be in there. It's one of those key moments. And it's not a long chapter, but it is a key scene. So I'll quickly recap the chapter. So in this chapter is the chapter that Duke Leto uh, finds a couple of bodies in the hallway, in this dimly lit hallway, and then he uh, comes across the real traitor is revealed. Uh, and he finds out, but he doesn't get a chance to tell anyone else. And the real traitor is Dr. Yue. So this is, uh, like, a, like I said, a key, key scene, and this is where everything really kicks off. Now, he finds the smuggler, Took, dead in the uh, hallway with blood on him. And uh, we can only assume that Dr. Yui killed him. But then he finds the shadow mates as well. And uh, she's trying to tell him something. But uh, he, you know, her last words aren't coming together. And then she dies. And then he's hit with some kind of a projectile weapon, like a stun uh, dart. And he didn't get, didn't ha even have a ch chance to activate his personal body shield. And then he falls back and his whole body goes numb. And then it's revealed that the traitor is Dr. Yue. Dr. Yue steps out. And then he realizes on top of that, that uh, he can't hear the shield generators going. It's too quiet. And then he comes to the hor horrific realization that Dr. Yui has sabotaged the house shields. And Dr. Yui is the traitor that they've been looking for. And then Dr. Yui reveals his plan to Duke Leto as he's dying. And then he reveals uh, why he's doing it. Why he had to betray them. And uh, basically because the Harkonnens had gotten hold of Dr. Yui's wife and which Dr. Yue loved very much and used her as le leverage to break Dr. Yue's uh, imperial conditioning, which uh, is supposed to be a seal, uh, a sign that he can administer medically to anyone and he's safe enough because, you know, the, the, this world of Dune and the, the uni this universe where you have all these feuding noble houses, like you're always, if you're a, a royal member of any kind of a house, you're always under the threat of assassination. That's always a possibility. But if one of these uh, soup doctors has the mark on their forehead that they've been conditioned, that they can even uh, administer to the emperor himself, and he doesn't have to worry about anything, any kind of shenanigans, that that's a sign. So that's why they, you know, never even considered Dr. Yui because of his imperial conditioning. But the Harkonnens found a way to break that. They found a way to do it, and they did it through his wife. And at this point in the story, we don't know if Dr. Yui's wife is still alive, and the Harkonnens have her hostage, or if they have her hostage, and they've been torturing her, and uh, using that to get Dr. Yui to uh, bend to their will, uh, so that they would stop torturing her, and Dr. Yui would get his wife back. But Dr. Yui has got like a plan within a plan, because there's always plans within plans in Dune. And his plan is actually... Uh, not only to give uh, the Baron what he wants, but also to betray the Baron as well. So he's supposed to deliver uh, Duke Leto to the Baron, but he fits, a he fits um, Duke Leto with a poison gas tooth. So, and then he tells the Duke, you know, the, the, uh, you know, I can't get close enough to the Baron to strike, but you will be able to, because he 
won't be able to help himself but gloat over you, to get right in your face and gloat that he's defeated you. So he sees a weakness in the Baron. And the Baron, that's his pride and his, uh, his, his, and his, and the way he brags and, you know, how smug he is. That's, that's kind of his weakness because he knows the, the, the Baron's going to want to get right in Duke Leto's face and brag and, you know, gloat about how he's taken down House Atreides. And then he says, when he gets that close, you can still strike. You can destroy the Baron. All you have to do is bite down hard and break this tooth and exhale uh, strongly and you'll release the poison gas and it'll kill anything around you. And then Duke Leto uh, refuses. He uh, doesn't want to uh, do it. He says, no, I, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to help you. You betrayed us. And then Dr. Wee says, yes, but if you do this for me in return, I will save the life of Paul and Jessica. Uh, so that's what uh, he, he tells him. He said, uh, you can't refuse me. If you refuse me, I won't save Paul and Jessica. Do this and I'll save them in return. I'll make sure that they are not killed by the Harkonnens and they make it out safe. And then, uh, so then uh, the Duke agrees. And from this point uh, so far in the book, it's been a very slow-paced novel up to this point. You know, it started off with them leaving Arrakis and going to Dune. And, you know, there's just been the slow buildup where you could see, like, the faith in Duke Leto has been slowly eroding amongst the men. And no one was really sure about this plan, about going to Arrakis, because this was something the Emperor ordered them to do, so they had no choice but to take the fief of Arrakis, even though they knew they were going into a trap. They knew that uh, this was a scheme cooked up by the Emperor and the Harkonnens to destroy House Atreides, because the, Arco the Harkonnens hate House Atreides because of a very long-standing feud that goes back generations. And uh, the Emperor, who admires Duke Leto, but at the same time has to destroy him because Duke Leto is gaining more and more power within the Landsrad, and he's getting more and more favorable. So he could actually threaten the political position, position of the emperor and uh, even maybe ascend to the imperial throne through marriage himself. And uh, the emperor doesn't want to give up his power, so that's why he got into cohorts with the Harkonnens to take down House Atreides. So I like that. It's, it's uh, you know, a lot of philosophical stuff going, up, going on, but now, you know, the action's going to start to kick in. Now everything's going to go topsy-turvy for House Atreides. And uh, the small chapter is going to kick everything off. So it's, uh, it's interesting. And, uh, you know, and then we see, the other thing about this chapter is that, you know, we've seen this horrible conflict within Dr. Yui the whole time. You know, he doesn't want to betray House Atreides because he still cares about these people. But he's just, he's so in love with his wife and he wants to save his wife so badly or get revenge for his wife and destroy uh, the Baron that it's almost like shorting out everything else in his brain, even his compassion for House Atreides and, thing, and things like that. Uh, so it, it's a really cool chapter. And this is one scene, uh, I can't wait to see this in the new film how they're going to play it out. I mean, I always have kind of like the way I picture it in my head and then the way it's portrayed in the, the other movies and stuff, like the miniseries and then the 1984 film and things like that. So it's really going to be cool to see how this uh, plays out on the, big, on the big screen in the new film. So yeah, uh, not really lots to talk about in this chapter, but the other thing I wanted to say is this has been strongly foreshadowed the whole time that some horrible end was going to come to the Duke in the book, but even the characters could sense it. Even the Duke could sense it himself, like on like a subconscious level somehow, or just some inner voice was telling him that like his time was up. He could feel the, you know, headman's axe right on his neck. So it's kind of an interesting thing. So, but short chapter, I mean, this is a short chapter in a book, but it's a key chapter. It's a key chapter in the story. This is a key event. And uh, so, interesting stuff. So that's everything I got to say in this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section, and I will see you at the next one.